This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. We're now on the final uh, chapter of the lecture notes, uh, something called investment appraisal. And I will break this down into three, uh, hopefully fairly short lectures, uh, because there are three techniques that you need to be aware of. But well, first of all, what we're talking about by investment appraisal, uh, we're not talking about investing in shares and things. We're talking about investments in new machines. Maybe we're thinking of buying a new machine. It will cost us 100000 And we need to uh, decide, is it worth buying the machine or isn't it? We'll have to budget, we'll have to decide, uh, you know, what returns do we expect from the machine. But it's that sort of investment. Is it worth buying a machine or isn't it? And so that's what we're looking at, what we call capital investment, new machine, new building, that sort of thing. Uh, and the first and the most important technique is something called net present value. And what we do here, the idea behind this is very simple. Uh, in practice, we'll do various budgets, but we budget what cash flows we expect from this machine and base the decision on whether we get back more cash than we spend or less. Let me show you what I mean with the example. Example one. A new project will cost 80,000 and is expected to last four years. At the end of four years, it's expected to have a scrap value of 10,000. So we think we'll get 10,000 back at the end. The project is expected to generate operating cash flows each year as follows 20 in the first year, 30 in the second, 40 in the third, 10 in the fourth. What I mean by operating cash flows, and quite importantly, is we're going to make the decision based on the net cash we expect each year. So in the first year, you know, presumably we expect to be selling units, we'll receive the sale money, uh, there'll be various costs of making the units, we'll be paying out. Well, the operating cash flow is the net cash each year. And quite importantly, it's the cash we look at, not profits. Um, I could go on forever here, but really it's later exams. But, you know, it's cash the company needs to pay dividends to its shareholders. It's cash the company needs uh, to be able to invest in new machines in the future. And so we forecast what the cash we expect is. And so, what do we expect these flows are? As of now, which we always call time zero, we expect we'd have to spend 80,000. I'll put it in brackets. It's an outflow. We're paying cash. In one year's time, we expect to receive an inflow of 20,000. In two years' time, another 30,000. Three years' time, another 40. Four years' time, another 10. Uh, but also, remember, in four years' time, we'll scrap the machine, we'll sell it. It says at the end of the four years, we expect to sell it for 10,000. And so those are the cash flows we're expecting. Pay out 80, get back 20, 30, 40, 10, 10. And if it weren't for one problem, it'd be easy. Because to make the decision, we say, well, if we get more cash in than we pay, it's good and we'll buy the machine. If we get less cash in, it's bad. And here we pay out 80. How much do we get back? 20, 50, 90, 110. So you pay out 80, you get back 110. We have a surplus of the difference. It's worthwhile, except, of course, there's interest. 
we're having to pay interest on money at, what is it? 10% a year. And so, although if there was no interest, you pay out 80, get back 110, and net 30,000, we need to account for the interest. The net cash is going to be less. Because either we've had to borrow the 80,000, and so we're having to pay interest, or even if I've got 80,000 already, the 80,000 presumably could have been earning me interest. And if I put, use it to buy this machine, I'm losing interest. And so what we need to calculate is how much are we left with after accounting for interest. Now, we could do all this compounding business we did in the previous lecture. But standardly, to account for interest, we discount. We work out the present value the equivalent amount now of each of the cash flows. So 80,000 now, of course, is 80,000. But 20,000 in a year's time, we account for the interest by discounting. We've been through discounting already. We'll multiply by the discount factor at the rate of interest of 10%. And so the discount factor one year at 10% from the tables is 0 0.909. And so the equivalent amount now, the present value, 20,000 times 0 0.909, 18,180. It's equivalent to we're receiving 18,180 now. All right, delay a year, there's interest at 10%, it's 20,000. We've got the present value. And similarly for each of the flows, in two years' time, the factor of two years at 10% is 0 0.826. Uh, for three years, 0 0.751. For four years, 0 0.683. And again for four years, 0 0.683. And so work out the present value of each flow, 30,000 times 0 0.826 is 24,780. 40,000 times 0 0.751, 30,040. 10,000 times 0 0.683 is 6,830 each time. So there's the present value of all the flows, the equivalent amount now. Pay out 80, get back 18, 24, 36, 6. Well, is there a net surplus or deficit? Have them up. The inflows 18,180 plus 24,780 plus 30,040. 6,830, 6,830. Minus the original 80,000 gives me plus 6,660. And what is that? It's positive. So that is the cash surplus after accounting for the interest. Uh, and if it's a surplus, if it's positive, you accept the project. Had it been negative, a deficit, you would reject the project. And so that's it. We list all the cash flows, outflows, inflows. We discount. We spent enough time discounting in the previous lectures. The net present value, or NPV. Again, if it's positive, there's a surplus and you accept. If it's negative, there's a deficit you reject. Here, uh, there were different flows each year, so I used the ordinary present value tables. Had it been the same amount each year, had it been 20,000 each year, 
You might not use your annuity tables. We've been through all that already. But that's how we apply the discounting to investment appraisal. Okay, now before I pause, I'll stop this lecture because I said I'm splitting this into three. Do appreciate in practice, all those figures we've been using are estimates. You know, when we have bought the machine, so you'd be estimating what cash receipts you'd be expecting. And of course, if they were, if they turned out to be different, we may have made the wrong decision. But another problem is the rate of interest. Now I know I can go to the bank and say, what rate of interest would you charge me? Oh, 10%. Mm. For a company though, for reasons I can't go into here, it is a later exam and it's not in the syllabus of this exam, but for a company, it's impossible to calculate the cost of money exactly. Because companies borrow from shareholders, they borrow from loans, all sorts of things. And so all you'd really know is that all interest we think is about 10%. But we could be wrong. And what happens if the interest turned out to be 11%, 12%? I think you'd accept that the more the cost of money is, the higher the interest, the worse the project will be. And so if the rate of interest turned out to be 15%, the project would be a lot worse, the net present value would be a lot lower. If it was still positive, no problem. We're still happy we've done it. But if it ever went negative, we'd have made the wrong decision. Well, the second technique you can be asked to deal with relates to that interest. Now, I'm going to be using the same example, so keep that example in front of you. But in the next lecture, we'll look a bit more about the interest rate.